Hey guys, Chris here with Omnimetrics. In today's video, we're going to show you how to install a TG2 on a Generac 8 kilowatt generator. Now this one specifically has the Nexus Evo controller, so it may be a little bit different than what you have, but uh, as I'll start this video off saying, the first thing you need to do uh, once you receive your unit is go to our website. Uh, there's installation guides for your specific unit and controller and generator find that specific one you can follow along with this video still even though it'll have a little bit of differences with it uh, but you can still watch this video and follow along with those uh, as I mentioned you have your TG2 unit here this is what it comes with the box uh, and with the installation guides there's a QR code inside every box that you can scan and it'll take you to that exact page that I was talking about so if you're having trouble finding it no worries just just scan that QR code with your phone and it'll bring up the installation guide section. You can find the specific installation guide for your generator and controller. Uh, within the unit, you'll have all your wiring uh, as well as your antenna. Uh, that'll be needed in this video, and I'll go over the, the next steps with that. Uh, other equipment we recommend, voltage meter. Obviously, you want to make sure that you have uh, an electrical current going through. You also want to make sure that when you're starting to install, there is no electrical current going through to keep you safe, uh, as well as gloves and we also recommend a socket set i have a couple different tools but we do recommend a socket set that specific uh, specifically fits the batteries for it it'll just make it easier for you the other piece as i mentioned with the antenna um, you may actually need a drill depending on your type of unit this unit is aluminum um, so the uh, antenna itself you'll have to uh, either stick or drill the metal bracket that's on top and that's how the antenna attaches. It is a uh, magnetic antenna. So if the unit itself is actually metal, the antenna will stick. There's no need for that piece. Uh, but if not, the bracket is uh, inside the box with your unit. And you can either drill or just stick that on whatever's easier. So let's go inside and get this thing installed. All right, so first steps to the install. Number one and most important, you want to make sure that your generator is in the off position or turned off. Now you notice I have my gloves. Again, this is to prevent any type of accidental electrical current, but here's where you can check. You open this specific generator up. Notice we have our switch, auto off manual. Want to make sure it's actually turned off. Now, if you can't find this switch or don't know where that is, just disconnect the battery. That is what we recommend because then you can be absolutely certain that there's no electricity running and that the generator doesn't accidentally turn on. Nobody remotely accidentally tests it when you plug it in, uh, even as you're setting it up. So very, very important. Again, another reason I have gloves on. Second piece before you kind of start panning out your unit. Uh, as I mentioned, the antennas will go on the top. You want to make sure that there is nothing actually blocking. No tree limbs, roofs, especially if it's metal. It'll block the signal and it can affect the data that's going into OmniView. So just make sure that when that antenna is on the top, that there's nothing blocking it and that you wire it uh, as it would be mounted on the top unit right there. So now we're going to look at actually figuring out where we're going to place the unit itself. Uh, as I mentioned with the antenna, one thing you want to be conscious of, we have the antenna wire here, but the reason we have the antenna wire here is we're going to mount the actual uh, TG2 Omni unit to the side. You notice I have it kind of wrapped away from everything, but that's something you want to be conscious of. There's no right or wrong way or specific spot uh, to put the unit. It's just uh, wherever it is free from any type of obstruction. Uh, as I mentioned for this specific unit, I know some people may be a little bit timid because of the heat the generator can emit. Um, that's absolutely fine as long as it's free. We've also seen uh, customers place the unit here or on the lid. That's fine as well. The only thing we want to uh, provide caution to is that there is enough room to close the lid uh, if you see something like an imprint of the unit, it's it's a little bit too tight and we do not recommend that. So uh, again, just wherever the easiest spot uh, that the unit and the wiring is free for, from obstruction, that's where we recommend installing the unit. Uh, and every case will be different, just, just more of what you feel comfortable on. So now we're ready to mount the unit. Now, one thing that's very important, just make sure that the antenna wiring is facing down uh, the rule of thumb is as long as you can read Omnimetrics correctly, the unit is mounted the correct direction. But the reason you want to make sure is in case any water or anything gets like that, if you have the unit like this, it could potentially get inside. 
So it'll just keep everything dry. But again, rule of thumb, as long as you can read Omnimetrics, the antenna's down, you're facing the correct direction. So as I mentioned, we're gonna mount it on the side here. It's magnetic, so it just goes on. And notice it's, it's very, very secure. You can shift it, but it does take a little bit of uh, strength to actually move it around. Uh, and I'm gonna run the wiring over the top right here. So as I mentioned, the antenna bracket or the antenna connection, this cable here, I'll take it back off and reconnect it. Antenna is connected. As I mentioned, the wiring is away from the actual generator itself. And for the Nexus controller, uh, all we need for this one is the eight pin connector and the black wire and the red wire. Those will be for your power sources. Once you separate those wires, uh, the other ones we recommend zip tying off. Uh, you can uh, clip them and, and put electrical tape, but just make sure that these wires are away from everything else uh, because specifically all you need for this is the red, the eight pin, and the black. It can get a little bit tricky, but we recommend don't adjust any of these until you have everything actually connected and you can move these out of the way just because if you start clipping or adjusting, uh, you may go a little too far, and it's a whole lot easier to take more off than uh, to try and figure out how to add more back on. So we know in some cases that uh, techs may take the control panel off. That's fine. It actually makes this process easier. But for me, I'm just going right underneath, and I plug the 8-pin, the actual plug itself. I don't know if you can see it, but I just plugged it. It's right in there. So as I mentioned, uh, all you need is the black and the red. The red will go to the positive terminal on the battery. The black will go to the negative. I'm going to say that one more time. Red to the positive, black to the negative. Uh, and notice I have the wire separated. I did cut one of my zip ties just to give myself more room. And as I mentioned, uh, once we get this all plugged up to the battery, I'm going to wrap this up and just kind of keep it out of harm's way. So again, this is where you'll need the socket set. already loosened it just a little bit. Now, once you get the nuts actually biting, that's when you take your socket set and just tighten them back down so you get actual contact. And that's when you will actually have power to your unit and we'll test it out. So now that we have power, we need to make sure that we have power to the unit. Notice you have the blue light and the red light. Now, what I will also show you is once it actually gets power, there's an LED light sequence that'll show up, but this is the easiest way to make sure that you actually have power to the unit uh, and that it's properly connected to the battery. So now that you have your unit installed, the very next step is to call our tech support team, 770-209-0012, and you'll hit option two. I'll put that right below me here, but again, 770-209-0012, option two, and they're going to have you run a couple tests. What they will actually need is they will need the unit ID. You can find the unit ID both on the unit here or on the box itself. Uh, they're also going to ask you for the address of the unit. And the main thing is they're just going to want to run a couple tests, make sure that we're receiving all the data that uh, we need uh, to showcase in OmniView. Uh, and once you're done with that, all you have to do is switch the generator back to auto and you can put everything back together. So on behalf of Omnimetrics, I want to thank you for your support and partnership. Stay tuned for more install videos like these, more tutorials. And if you need anything, please feel free to reach out to our team and we'll get it right to you. Have a great day.